Hello my friends, after last week's Kagura matchup chart, we are back again, this time with uh, Blaze Blue Central Fiction tier list. So just every character and how strong they are in the game. You will notice that I that the tiers uh, go from A tier to bullshit blazing. And there are two reasons for, the, for that, of course. One of those reasons is Kagura needs to be triple S tier. So obviously that's why we have to start at A. But another reason why we need to start at A is that Blaze Blue characters all in all are pretty strong. So um, when I played Guilty Strive, I played Mei and people said that Mei was top tier contender, she was a demon and stuff and it was a mistake to give her so much damage and so on and so on and I played Mei and she felt pretty standards, pretty middle of the pack and um, so if that's an S tier in Guilty Girl's Drive then that means the worst character in Blaze Blue is still pretty good and all in all I still believe that every character has it in them to win a major if uh, piloted by a prodigy like if Monarch blocks your mix-ups for 30 seconds then it doesn't really matter if he plays Lambda or he would play Noel he would still gap you a lot and um, yeah with all that said let's start we start from the bottom this time because last time we start we started from the uh, top and that puts us here with Isayoi and Isayoi we all know that she isn't bad she is pretty good in fact the question is so is she Ubers or Ubers it's a fun interesting loan word from Germany uh, from from the German language but yeah I think I'm gonna put her in Ubers for now the thing about Isayoi is that she got this uh, she got the Eno style movement and she can build stocks fairly easily to use that mode effectively and then when, when she got all the, all the stocks she can also teleport and her pokes are not bad enough to offset all those strengths, right? So her pokes are pretty decent actually, um, quite middle of the pack, but combined with everything else with the extremely hard to block mix up with the great movement all in all and her overdrive that lets her get all the resources she needs essentially for free make her a very strong character and maybe even a contender for top tier so next up we got my another character who is very strong and uh, the thing about Mai is apparently she doesn't really have a bad matchup I personally can't think of a bad matchup um, for her either, so the Mai players always say Ragnar beats her, but I don't really see that either because she has similar poking range and essentially she has got tier pokes and she got not that great of a mix to be honest, but other than that her projectile is amazing and flip and movement in general are just very good tools she can use in top of fast buttons with great range that makes her uh, an easy high to top tier character. If I had to rate her um, in... So I believe I'd even put her above Isayoi even though I don't really know what kind of bad matchups Isayoi could have to be honest because her tools are just so solid and I could see her maybe losing to dedicated zoners because then she might have troubles getting up stocks but as we said overdrive Gets take, uh, takes care of that. But now it's a character we've all been waiting for. Just have to say, <laughs> show that again. Um, Kagura, my beloved. Triple S tier, easy as that. And of course, you guys want to listen to reason rather than just me memeing around. Um, Kagura has arguably the best defense in the game because he got flash kick. Uh, so Fafnir, two different kind of flash kicks, one of them being an enter air B Fafnir, beating up pretty much every uh, air option except for the one of uh, <laughs> Akumen and um, C Fafnir just having an invincible, invincible reversal that's so easy to use in every situation and um, has even also has very great range for that and you doesn't care about left right mix up so that are super strong tools and there's a 5 frame 5a so the fastest button in the game 
so the fastest 5A in the game, with shared with other characters, of course, but that alone makes it amazing to stop anti to stop to punish attacks that you otherwise couldn't, and also to use it as an anti air and get 4K out of it if you get a counter hit. And on top of that, his offense does have problems, and that's why he isn't uh, above that. But in general, his pokes are very long range. They are on the slower side, but they are still great, especially when you're fighting a character with uh, fairly small um, pokes. But yeah, of course, he struggles a bit against Zona style characters and against the top of the crop as well. So that's why he can't be Z tier or above. And his offense has uh, the obvious problem that C buttons and D buttons, so his stances and his sword swings all are um, vulnerable to overdrive. So overdrive is a super strong tool against him, but then again, once you burst it once in one of his combos when he called you out for 4k damage or anything and you burst that, then all of a sudden you don't have overdrive anymore and he can just freestyle on you, run up. And Kadamos as a TK Kadamos as a uh, tool to open up in conjunction with his uh, common grab and all in all his uh, 5B being a low and all of that good stuff. So he can run stagger pressure, he can reset his pressure with orbs, and of course none of this is like super oppressive, like the top is of the top tier, but uh, again. He can always win on defense and then snowball very hard after that. Getting that one C Fafnir, getting on top of the opponent, snowball, win the game. That's something that only a good character could do. It's not like, I mean, of course, you could also make the argument, yeah, if he can only do that. But he, get, he has a good enough neutral game that winning on defense on top is pretty huge. So yeah, my point stands and I will die on this hill. I know that Kagura has a very bad reputation. People usually say he's a low tier and I really can't agree with that. And I believe some of that stuff is more or less uh, that people really don't think about him and take what they hear for granted, which is often something that happens all the time. Like uh, opinions can change. We just need the right player to change the opinion. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the one, but maybe someday some prodigy will put him in everyone's mind where he belongs, which is triple S tier. Um, enough of the uh, Kagura rant. Now let's go to the next one, which is Arakuna. And Arakuna, obviously Uber's tier. Um, the problem is, so uh, why Arakuna is strong is, we all know it, it's a curse that he can build up fairly easily and then when he got the curse on you then he can spawn the bugs uh, all the time and you essentially are forced to sit there and block which means he just needs to open you up which is fairly easy with bugs uh, on the screen and um, there's not really, really anything you can do out of it even if you get like a, l a lucky uh, lucky dp lucky flash kick then um, then yeah, he still hits you afterwards with his bugs and you're doomed, so there's nothing really... It's not like you can guess a hit and curse disappears or anything. So the, the thing about Arakune, if they were to... I believe he's not an unbalanceable character, but of course he's difficult to balance. I believe they sh would have to uh, make his neutral all in all a bit weaker, because yes, he isn't super oppressive or anything, but he's super evasive when... Um, when he doesn't have curse and then pinning him down and getting the damage in before he gets his curse is essentially what this uh, what every matchup against him boils down to and because he can get cursed way too easily with just one combo um it's definitely always pretty much always in his favor so that's why he's a uber's at least i might put him up here but of course we all know that the bullshit blazing tier is for one specific character in, the, in this roster but maybe i will put him there because i don't know how big the discrep discrepancy be between those is but yeah after all those uber threats we get to the a tier to one of the a tiers so the thing about Terumi is 
he got okayish pokes, but he relies way too much on uh, pressure resets and kind of um, trying to. Yeah, he doesn't really have that amazing uh, tools to open his opponents up. He doesn't have anything really. He's like solid enough to not be super bad, to not be like, oh, you can't play this character. But he doesn't really have anything going for him that makes you, yeah, you should play this character because of this and that. The only thing in his favor is essentially uh, the robber effect of his overdrive because how his uh, drive system works is that he can build meter quite quickly and when he has 100 meter and overdrive he can get 6, 7k and stuff. So in that way a bit like Kagura but he lacks all the tools that Kagura has. He doesn't have a strong zoning or a strong keep out game. He doesn't have uh, super strong uh, damage otherwise. So his damage is conditional. His pokes are okay but not great and um, yeah not not much going on from him, for him, unfortunately. So, on a similar vein, uh, I'm not sure of in a similar vein. So for Tao Kaka, I'm thinking whether she is an S or trip, uh, or double S tier. I don't see her in here because she uh, lacks too much. So the thing about her that probably holds her down, the only thing is that she got a weak defensive uh, side of things. So the idea about her is that you use her tricky movement beforehand to not even get on the defensive side and uh, essentially move around, dance around your opponent, get the hit and then uh, get a, uh, then more or less run the pressure on them all the time. But of course one DP can turn all that around and all of a sudden you have to run defense and if your character doesn't have good defense then that can be quite difficult. So she doesn't have the greatest damage either and in mix up too so like her overhead is fairly slow compared to other characters in the cast and she doesn't get like huge reward out of it so kinda difficult kinda difficult for her so yeah I guess I believe I she be, she belongs in S tier of course at the end of the video I will still rearrange stuff to see um, how they are compared to each other how I picked them because it gets easier as time goes on and stuff. So next up Naoto. Naoto is, uh, um, is the best Shoto style character that we have. Maybe not as much Shoto but he's very uh, very straightforward in terms of gameplay. He just wants to be in your face. He has good buttons. He can, uh, mm, he can hold down the D button and uh, get good range and unblock, not unblockables but uh, barrier crushing moves out of that which is uh, quite quite good, rounds up his kid very well. He has sway to evade stuff and bait stuff. His movement all in all is great and his enhanced uh, attacks are really great. And an enhanced DP is pretty much the best DP in the game. And um, he has also got the uh, Kagura levels of damage, but all in all better tools just because he is, his tools are quick and he can get in quite quite fast and yeah just one of those characters that people thought once is good but now that he's optimized enough he's a very very good character one of the best in the game if you're not accounted for the top is of top tier like he's the highest side here probably which of course so this Z tier and triple s tier for me is high tier territory and ubers and bullshit blazing probably top tier um it's just that, yeah, we need several tiers for those because there's some discrepancy over there. Blaze Blue is an older game, so the uh, balance can be a bit on the rougher side. Next up, we got Carl, and he's another Uber threat. So, um, the thing about Carl is that he can put you in the bl Nirvana Blender, so he sandwiches you and uh, between himself and his puppet Nirvana, and then you essentially have to block all the time and you it's difficult to get out of that position and he then can run Oki and everything. His pokes are so solo car and would be very bad but again the combination the puppet characters in Arc System Works game always strong and he's the most puppet puppet character of all time because you can control Nirvana freely. 
unlike um, other characters that are a puppet style character. So yeah, definitely the best, maybe the best ca puppet character of all time. Next up we have Amane and he is, he is somewhere around here, so either he's a mid tier, he's mid tierish, or I see he is a high tierish. And um, I think he struggles a lot with rushdown characters like Naoto, Bang, and other characters who are very good at closing the gap. But he has amazing uh, range on on all his buttons, and he has this unique mix-up that no one has, which is a uh, chip chip block throw, so uh, chip strike throw. He doesn't really have high low mix up, his only high is uh, his JA. And everything is either low or mid, so essentially you can always block uh, low against him. And his entire game plan falls around getting the drill gauge up and beating you, essentially beating you while you are blocking. And this makes him very strong against more defensive, defensively oriented characters like Kagura, probably Hakumen as well. But of course, against those offense rushdown characters, he is not that great. And because I believe the character, um, the character roster is about half and half, some of the rushdown characters don't have really great movement, like uh, Ballet or Asriel. So that is definitely the one thing that is in his favor. But I also think that he might even have uh, problems against fellow zoners. So that's why I'm gonna put him in in double S tier for now. Just a solid character all around, but um, nothing too great in the great, nothing too great in the big picture to really warrant him a higher spot, I believe. But yeah, the higher spot is definitely something that really just gets. He's essentially the persona for the persona for arena function with with Ignis as they both work in tandem, but you don't have to control her all the time. And that still makes him a very strong a menace to behold in offense and also in some way in defense because he got a, a tool, let lay, to um, dodge attacks and he can uh, control uh, Ignis, his wife, during that and that makes him... that is a very strong tool to have to, to a dodge and attack at the same time, that's insane. And um, all in all, his his buttons are on the slower side, so are those of Ignis. That's probably the reason why most people consider him weaker than Karl, and so do I. Even though I don't really have that much experience against Karl per se, but I've got enough experience against Relius. I mentioned Trigger in the last video, but I've also played Serpanda quite a few times in tournaments and actually did uh, fairly well, so um, this footage of that in this uh, uh, in this channel, so maybe check that out, but I did fairly well and I believe that yeah, Relius is a very strong character, but you can definitely play around his stuff, so that's really why he's not near enough in the top tier and also below Naoto, because Naoto is way more oppressive and gets better reward when he hits you. But good reward is not really something that Celica gets, and so I'm gonna play it safe and I'm gonna put her in here, but I believe she's better than Terumi. Just because her pokes in general are better, she has a DP style move, it's not exact, exactly a DP, it's more like she has guard point on um, the Celica upper, I believe it's called. and. Um, and she also got this very long ranging overhead with guard points too, so it's something that you, you essentially have to block it or jump out. And even if you uh, instant block it, I believe you, she's still pretty safe, so you can't punish her for using it, which is fairly great, I believe. So that and her ability to dive kick from the air make her way better than Terumi. I mean, honestly, listening to myself, I might make a case for putting her into S tier, but the problem that I um, heard is that she has restrictions when she doesn't have when she is when she doesn't have recoverable health, 
and that puts her down and honestly I don't really know what kind of restrictions those are because yeah for the most part Celica players will not recover that health if they can get uh, if that means they will lose their tools and usually they get hit at some point and if they don't then they are winning too right so I don't know how that much that matters I'm gonna put her in A tier for now but I can see her rising up into S tier um, either as time goes on and I do another one of these next year or um, or just in the course of this video. So next up Hakuman, the white face and the white face is nah I wanted to put him triple S tier because I like him but I believe he's just a fairly mid tier character. Like, he is the scariest character in the game, hands down, because he gets Mita for doing no absolutely nothing. And um, so every other character has to approach, but of course approaching is not without risk, because he can get the read and get the counter and get even more Magatama, some more resources for that. And he has all in all great range and humongous damage if he has enough Magatama. So that's uh, the thing, he's the big problem, why he isn't higher. Why I wouldn't place him as high as Kagura is that his defensive tools are not that great outside of counter and counter of course is not like Relius Ledley that he can cover it in some way but it makes him vulnerable to an attack afterwards or even a throw if you know he's gonna counter you can just throw him for pretty much uh, a guaranteed punish and even if he didn't want to counter as long as he didn't attack you uh, too early before then you get still get the throw out and the best he can do is uh, um, throw escape but if it's a common grab then he can't even do that so that's just something that makes him a little bit less strong his OD overdrive is of course the robbery overdrive number one in this game because he can get so much damage out of it and he builds his resources even faster so that's uh, definitely things uh, speaking for him but in terms of matchups, I believe uh, fighting against Zona is pretty bad. Zonas is pretty bad. Yeah, um, him being able to create those projectiles when he cuts a projectile is pretty good. It gives him some room to move to manu maneuver around, but it's not enough to overcome those Zona matchups. And um, yeah, again that. Difficulties against Zonas and difficulties against uh, against Rushdown. I believe like Na Naoto can also smoke him fairly easy. He gets in and then uh, he just let makes uh, Hakuman guess. And when he's wrong on time, then he puts him into the blender and stuff. So I believe Hakuman not quite the triple S tier, but double S tier, and I believe on the higher end of that. So he isn't like. Some other characters that we will put down there and we've got Rachel so Rachel I will put not in the top tier contender and I know this, this is the spiciest pick again we had this in the Kagura matchup but I believe she's fairly overrated she's still a strong character with wind so she can pretty much control the entire screen and move her around move herself around pretty freely, even can move you around a bit if you're in the air and of course especially if you're in uh, hit stun for comboing but yeah all in all I believe she still has to take too many risks and her unblockable, her unreactable overheads are great and her um, pressure so her Oki with George 13 is pretty much among the best in the game but she has to get into there and she has limited resources and I believe that um, of course I'm not I don't know the entire um, tournament results of all time on any region or anything but I don't see her winning that much that I'd, uh, I'd put her up, up there of course it's always dependent on the player but <laughs> case in point if the best Europe play, uh, best Rachel player in Europe can uh, gets defeated by gets upset by me by a mid-level player then I believe that the character in itself is not that strong if like one of the best players with one of the best characters shouldn't get defeated by 
a mid player with uh, a good character. So, um, yeah, of course, ha upsets happen all the time, so that's not all, all things, but yeah, I really don't see it, and that's more probably more a feeling thing, but yeah, she has to take too many risks. That's what it boils down to, in my uh, what I'd say. And she has, she is a bit on a timer, even though she can refill the timer with a super. But then again, spending 50 meter to refill your timer is not that great either. So I'm gonna put her um, below Naoto, but I think still on top of uh, Relius. So again, it might seem pretty downplay to most, but I still believe she's a good character, don't get me wrong. She's just not the best character, or in the top 5. I don't see her there. Susano, so Susano, I believe, triple S tier. So, um, he's called the... I mean, he's kind of a scrub killer, but also a mid-level uh, mid killer, because he his offense is so opp oppressive if you, if you let him run it. And he also got great tools when he got the, gets the right unlocks. Uh, amazing buttons that always put him plus. The only thing is he's kind of slow co in comparison, but he makes it up with a huge damage. And again, uh, kind of a kind of good versatility because he get he got so many different specials to choose from. Even though he has to unlock some first, which can be the big problem. But very good. Uh, Susano players can always adjust their routing so they get the right unlocks for the right matchup. So I believe that makes him a very strong character in the triple S tier and I'm not sure if I should put him below or above Kagura. But anyway, great character. Don't know that much to say about him. Don't know the matchup that well either. I only know that <laughs> Kagura can uh, dodge his 5B with a 5C. And get huge damage, but that's this is something that should have, that I should have brought up in the last video, not in this one. But I did it anyway. And Valkenhain, our next character, and I put him uh, confidently above Rachel. So in in a way, they are quite similar. They all they both have amazing uh, mobility, but um, the thing about Valkenhain is why I think he's better than uh, Rachel is that he is not like he doesn't have four stocks of whatever of uh, Wolf Gorge, but he got this continuous uh, um, Gorge and he can also charge it up a little bit easier than Rachel can and all in all he's a bit more oppressive just and a bit more tricky to pin down then Rachel. Rachel is a bit more floaty and she has zoning capabilities that he doesn't have but I believe he's just more oppressive and I see you see more results coming from him as a character with Jonah doing even beating Monarch uh, in the US and Mocha in Europe also very strong he did stellar performances in team tourneys just by himself where everyone else banded together and he entered alone got only one life, other teams got three lives, and he still got very far with that. So, um, Valkenhain, great character in both results and theory, and the only thing holding him down in some way is his human form, which has good enough pokes with great range, but he is a little bit too slow in that form, of course, but that's the entire idea, right, so that he has those a long range normal in human form and far and um, short range but super fast normals and crazy mobility in his wolf form and puts it together you essentially have a character that can do it all except for having a very serviceable dp i believe his he has his attack with the knee i believe it's 6a but i believe that's more of an anti and not a dp so that's his only downside and that is something that Rachel has a little bit better because he got, she got the gaming share. But again, I believe Valkenhain is even better because uh, on top of all the, gra all the um, unreactable overheads he has, he also has to take uh, risks, of course, but he also got a common crap and stuff. So, yeah, I just believe 
Again, ordering the tiers is always a bit difficult. But I believe Falkenhain is a little bit better than Rachel. Definitely not better than Rachel is Makoto. And she is definitely uh, down here in the S tier. I don't, I'm not sure if maybe you could even make a case for her being either a double S tier or A tier. Um, the thing about Naoto is essentially, ach, Naoto, Makoto, but <laughs> we get this now. She's pretty much outclassed by the other brawler type characters, by Susano and by Naoto. So essentially, Susano got way better range at everything, but is a bit slower. Naoto got pretty much similar speed, but um, has a better uh, has a better offense overall. It's more plus and um, has so much more damage potential than her. All in all, better tools. He has sway. She does not, and her big problem is that she has to get in, her mobility is good enough for that, and she also got a DP, which is great, but she doesn't has anything out of the ordinary that makes her very oppressive or strong. She's just a solid brawler type character, if you want to get close, get, get, uh, get in fairly fast. And she also got some mix-ups there, but most of them, they are fairly they are fairly reactable, so it's not like Valkenhain or Rachel level of uh, unreactableness. It just, it's just not there for her. So that's why I believe putting her here in S tier um, below Tao feels right. Like she got the, um, the DP, which is a little upside, but Tao got way trickier movement and it's a little bit more difficult to catch Tao. Um, yeah, next up we've got a very solid mid-tier, maybe high-tier character, Platinum. Uh, Platinum got all those super great... Uh, she got fairly great pokes and her items that she can get are of course random. That's a little bit of a thing holding her down. If she had access to every item at any time at her own discretion, then she would be a lot better. Then she might... Yeah, then I believe she'd be topping the triple S tier. Um, but all in all, just having solid range, having good ways to mix you up with uh, uh, yeah, with Mami Circular, but not necessarily only. But she, yeah, she got a common grab, she got uh, highs, she can even cross you up a little bit with her pogo stick and um, can reset her. I uh, can. Can, res can stall a bit in the air, can also use that to, to get pretty difficult to react to overheads on the ground, so all in all, strong character. I don't think she has a DP, which is something that holds her down. Uh, she gets one, I believe that her bat can act as a DP, but of course, again, you don't have every item at every time, that's what's holding her back, but other than that, good, very good character. But yeah, bullet is not. The B stands for bottom in Ballet, and this is meant in all the ways. So <laughs> I believe she's a, she might be the the worst character in the game. Maybe even her or to, uh, so either her or Terumi. So the thing about her is yes, she got uh, gigantic damage if she got heat level two and is in your face. But her movement is pretty bad. So the only thing that she essentially can do is try to. Uh, Get in a position where she's far enough away from you that you can't uh, that you can't punish her for getting heat level up or get a knockdown and she gets heat level up. But again, for that she needs to get close to you. Her normals are good enough; they are okayish, but there is nothing really that, that stands out. She got a DP, which is nice, and of course a common grab, which is the entire idea about her that she's a more mobile grappler. But yeah, the problem is, compared to the other grappler, she is more mobile, yes, but he still got better tools to get in and, um, or rather, to get his opponent to him. And that makes him a lot stronger than her, so that's a bit sad and I believe, yeah, she definitely needs something more to be really, really strong. And so this is more like you have to play, outplay the, your opponent. And then you can steamroll pretty high. So, because big damage and uh, all in all fairly oppressive when she gets in, but getting in is a problem. So, the, the good old um, 
it's a good old zona problem not zona grappler problem but a little bit hypercharged so yeah nothing that i would recommend i would not recommend picking her up if you're necessarily playing to win but of course um as i said uh just pick, I didn't say it said this yet, but uh, just pick the character you like, of course. Uh, don't use tier lists to get an opinion about how good a character is, we might all be wrong. That happens all the time, like in Smash Bros. Melee, uh, Yoshi being <laughs> carried by one man alone. And I can see that for pretty much any character in the game. Hazama! Z tier, definitely. And... I want to say he's better than both Valkenhain and Rachel. Probably not Naoto, but the thing about uh, Hazama is, yeah, he got fairly stubby movement, but that's the entire idea about him, that he uses his uh, drive, his Ouroboros chain, to circumvent that, and that's absolutely crazy. Like, he can pretty much snipe you from pretty much any position, and he can just use the Ouroboros to get... So, yeah, he can use the robots to get to spaces where you can't get to, and then he can just snipe you from out there and um, essentially punish uh, pokes that you do and stuff. Ouroboros is such a strong tool, and when he gets close, he's actually scary with his uh, stance because that's either a high or a low, and the low even has armor on it, so no easy flash kicking or flash kicking or DPing out there. And he can also, if he get if he um, if he reads you uh, DPing or anything, he can just bait it out by backdashing in the stands and then going in again. Such a strong character, such an annoying character to catch and uh, I don't really know what, what kind of character would, uh, would have a positive matchup against him. Maybe someone like Bang with great mobility and even uh, some zoning of themselves, but uh, for the most time apart, I see him having positive matchups all over the cast. And Hibiki. Yeah, I believe Hibiki is pretty. He might be the definition of mid. Mm, yeah, I think probably a bit worse than Armani. Uh, so, yeah, Hibiki got some zoning with his D buttons. But most of the time, he's the most honored character in the game. It's the only thing that's not honest about him that every Hibiki player wants to do all the time is uh, air resets with his air grab. So, um, with his Izuna drop in the air. So, essentially ending the combo on a 5A, getting you t uh, letting you air attack and then getting free damage with the Izuna drop is what they like to do. But other than that, he's fairly quick, has good movement has fairly quick buttons as well, not the longest range, but of course with his D buttons he can get in even from longer range. Uh, I mean, either get him himself or just uh, zone you out with some spacing. Not the greatest projector, but not the worst either. And um, all in all, solid mid tier. Mid is mid tier. And this is what the Jin Kisaragi brothers want to be uh, want us to believe about this character, but Jin is cracked. Jin is definitely uh, the least honest Shoto character of all time, if it weren't for Naoto. <laughs> like, he got so good tools, he, his tools are amazing. He got uh, absolutely great buttons, none of them are bad. He doesn't have the range that maybe Kagura has or anything, but his buttons come out that much faster. He um, also got this uh, Ice Swords to zone out a bit, but of course the zone is not the best where he really shines is by uh, out poking his opponent with uh, fast and good pokes that uh, essentially can cover anything. Then he also got great God Tier Oki with his Snowflakes and um, can even go for quite some resets with his... Uh, for throw resets and stuff with when he freezes you and then just doesn't continue the combo and all this stuff. So I believe he's like the most solid, solid character of all time. So uh, <laughs> if you want to win with, uh, with neutral 
and stuff. He's a he's a goat, and for that, and then he also got good Oki on top of that. So that make is more than enough to say that he's a high tier character. And now we got Nu, and I'm really not that sure. So she's either mid or slightly below that. So the idea is that with me, uh, with Nu and Lambda is that uh, Nu is a slightly more um, zony zoner of those two, but for the most part, for the most part, it doesn't really make that much sense to be more to be even better at zoning when Lambda is better at zoning than most of the uh, cast as well. So. Um, she, she still probably has some matchups that are way better than with Lambda, and but I believe because she's a more polarized, more specialized character, her matchup spread is also more uh, polarized. And the big, the biggest difference between those characters I can think of is that the um, the sickle storm, I believe it's called, the small eggs on the ground, is actually a low with new, and with Lambda it's not. So you can. You can mix up, you can high-low mix from afar with uh, Nu, which is something that Lambda can't do. And she also got this um, this projector that she can set up to hurt you, to hit you later. So that's also something that makes the zoning a lot better and can also uh, be used in close-up pressure. Not that you really want to do that with Nu, but uh, the option is there. And both got an... Uh, DP, I believe. I'm not sure if both of those got those and who got those. It's always confusing. Like, this history behind those characters being separated is just that there were once one character and then they saw, uh, found out that it was a bit too complex and of course it was pretty strong to have all the tools of, um, of both characters but switching between them. So she was kind of a stance character for a while. Lambda, but then they... Uh, Lambda or Nu? No, Nu in that time, yeah. So, kind of difficult to balance it all. And then they made some two separate characters but didn't make any visual adjustments to them other than this, co as in this uh, weird aura behind Lambda. I really wish they would have done something like a broken vis or anything on Nu. Certainly that would have been cool. But yeah, um... Enough of that rant, let's go off with Ragnar, or bo boy Ragnar. And Ragnar is a pretty mid character. So he got all the shooter stuff you want to do. He's a bit more aggressively inclined than uh, Jin, but his uh, pokes all in all aren't that great in comparison. He got Jesus Kick 5B, which is pretty good. And none of his tools are really bad, What? but what is the big problem with him is he's a low health character and he doesn't really have that much, that many ways to open you up. And most of them are somewhat committal. Like you can hit him all out of Gauntlet Hades, you can even hit him out of Health Fang, I believe. Death Side's the same. So essentially, he has to run, when he wants to run his pressure safe, then it's pretty much uh, the same thing over and over again. You can block it with not that much difficulty and that's what holds him down in the end. That he's supposed to be this in-your-face soul style uh, rushdown Shoto, but he essentially in high level he needs to be played more like the Kai Shoto, or like the Kai function, the more uh, neutral based Shoto. But then if we have that then Jin is just better at that job. So sadly he got outclassed by his uh, little brother. I feel sorry for you, Ragnar. I love you, but uh, yeah, your brother's just better in the uh, fighting department, but not in the personality department. So uh, let's go to another top tier in the personality department, which is Bang. And Bang, I'm gonna put him here triple S here, but I believe he's worse than Kagura. Um, the thing is, uh, he's super strong against Zona type characters, so Lambda and Nu really don't want to face him because his D-nails can, uh, can kinda disrupt their projectiles, so nullify them more or less, and then he can get in, so he can use them for that. He 
in general, just having a full screen projector in the air is pretty good for a character that has uh, that has such a great mobility, especially in the air with two air dashes. But all in all, he's fast. He got the three C of the gods, which uh, travels the entire world, and then even fatal counters if he gets a hit. But of course, if you jump enough, then that's not a deal. But then if you jump, if you know, Bang gets you jumping, then he can get can catch you in the air jumping. His JB is pretty good. JC not that much in neutral, but great combo tool of course. And um, he also got a common grab, not to mention so like he got insane mix up with TK uh, with TK Musasabi. So his gliding, so he can always go for a high whenever whenever he wants to essentially. And he got all, still got some lows. The entire idea about him is that he wants to um, he wants to catch you guard standing. So that's why he has so many uh, highs. And once you do that, and he hits, uh, he uh, clips you with the low. Then he can uh, can get into his uh, strong uh, into his very strong combos. And his combos on crouching opponents are pretty much non-existent. So that's the entire idea that he's. Uh, essentially a mix-up machine. The problem about being a mix-up machine is that he leaves up pretty many gaps. So he isn't like safe mix-up you have to guess and you have to stay in the blunder. He isn't like Carl or Relius or Rachel or anyone of the or anyone in that caliber. He just he just does what he does pretty good but he leaves gaps and he can also he can use nail bumpers to really uh, extend his combos on one hand and um, completely mix you up. Furin Kazan the same, you don't block Furin Kazan, you hope to survive it. One of the best overdrives in the game. But if your opponent has a good enough poke, they can just uh, get out there and catch you in Furin Kazan, not being able to block normally is a big downside. And um, yeah, Shippugeki, Shippugeki another common grab, so he got all the ways to mix you up, but he is definitely suffering in the defensive department. The department. So he doesn't have a, a reversal on his own, and he has to use 5A, which is pretty good for him. I believe it's 6 frames, but it's still, it hits crouchers, and um, it's all in all pretty good, even for anti-airing. But... It's not an invincible DP, he has to use meter for that and then he can choose two different ones, but um, the easier one to execute of course, uh, the one where he d uh, duplicates himself, I forgot the name. But yeah, very strong rushdown character, tricky rushdown character, very difficult rushdown character, uh, but too, too lagging on the defensive department to be anywhere higher than triple S tier and also um, a little bit outclassed by being the mix up uh, yeah by being the mix up character like uh, Valkenhain still mixes up just the same and even better and uh, Naoto while not having as good as a mix up just is safer on block so he can keep you easier in uh, he can keep you locked down way easier than Bang can do and gives way much way more damage in return even though Bang has quite good damage which is definitely something that is in his favor but him being so finicky with um, with comboing so he essentially has to adjust his combo against pretty much anyone in the cast he also got very difficult combos with delays, micro dashes, and um, and some stuff pretty unique to him, so uh, that makes him very difficult to pilot and not that much re reward in return. So yeah, if you want an easy character to win, then maybe look somewhere else. But he's a good character nonetheless. Uh, another good character, Kokono, and she is a better character than Bang and the and many other characters. Um, she's rising in the tier list a lot, and um, part of that are discoveries that Banana Can makes. Essentially, she is a mix-up machine as well, but she needs a little bit of setup for those. But then again, the setup is sometimes almost free because of a Super Ball Super, which is essentially everything you would want from a move. 
It's an invincible reversal and it's also set up at the same time. And even if you hit her after that, uh, after the fact, then the ball still exists and will uh, hit you in the face. So you need to lap specific responses to punish her. And that in which also means, of course, because you need that specific response, you can't go for her, for your uh, biggest uh, damaging combo afterwards, which also makes her a little bit safer. And she got all the mix up she wants with t different, different teleports and her, the way her magnetism her drones work and stuff with pulling her away, pulling her in and all stuff. Sometimes the Kokono players don't really seem to know what they are doing themselves and how are you supposed to know it then, right? How this affects them. It's kinda, she's kind of one of those big brain characters for setup lovers and um, I'm gonna put her above Rachel for that for that reason. Like her pokes are all in all better and her setup is I believe just as good. Her movement is a bit worse but um, movement is not everything and of course Rachel's movement is tied to a gorge either anyway. So yeah, definitely a strong character on the rise and he could be higher. Again, I'm a mid-level player so this might be the worst tier list you will ever see. But hey, uh, I've always got the time to top. I always got the chance to top it with my next one. Next up, we've got S, and S is Ubers. So um, the point about S is she got my boy style range, not quite, but almost. But she's a lot faster, so she can just micro dash a bit and then get the same range. Uh, and she has those crests that. Uh, kinda attack somewhat delayed so with those and her install I believe she can yeah with her install even her DP is safe which is insane and um, she can just lock you down forever and neutral is not that hard if you got Kagura style buttons with uh, Noel style speed so <laughs> pretty stupid character I don't know what they how they thought that would be great um, her projector is on the slower side, so that's something that you can get uh, take advantage of. And maybe if you can get the right spot in defense, then you can still turn uh, the wheel of fate <laughs> in your favor. And um, yeah, you can also, of course, bait her DP and stuff, but just a super strong character, super solid, fairly easy. So uh, my and S are considered the easy top tiers in this game. And I'm actually... Yeah, I believe that's fair, but the kit needs to be somewhat higher up, probably. From what I've heard, again, I have too little matchup experience against him. Um, Azrael. So Azrael, uh, for the most part, being a character that is struggling for similar reasons such as no, uh, such as Ballet because he has difficulties uh, getting in there but um, once he gets in there he's actually super scary a lot more scary than uh, Ballet is and he also got a lot better tools to deal with zoning for example because he can use uh, he can use Growler and with Growler he can negate projectiles and create a projectile of his own Phalanx, which then can, he can use and even get combos out of. So, and also another thing, his DP, while not the best in general, if he can get it and he has meter, then he can also get big damage out of it, which is something that most DPs can't. For instance, with Kagura, I need to spend 100 meter for 3k damage after my uh, flash kick DP. So being able to get more damage with less meter on your DP is pretty huge, but the, but the DP on its own is not that great. I believe it's sometimes, it isn't even super consistent with the uh, invincibility, but either way, having a DP is pretty good. And also he has good tools to mix you up um, with high lows and also keep plus afterwards. Uh, and yeah, when he got the uh, weak points, he's, He's a super scary character, but on the stubbier side with his normals and not the greatest with his movement, but still being teleports 
that uh, with which he can cross up really make him a, a scary character to contest. And so even though he struggles a lot against zoners and characters who can uh, keep him out consistently, uh, he is not that bad of a character, he's well rounded enough to still put up a very strong fi uh, fight and when he gets in then it can be Jova very soon, as the kids say. Um, Jubei, definitely not a kid, but taking care of many kids. And I am really not sure where to put him. I'm gonna say uh, pro he's probably here in the in the low slash mid tier. Uh, so the thing about Jubei is he is uh, he. It's difficult. Like he can put you into pressure, and he can all has also pretty tricky movement, and he can use that very well. And when he has his install, everything gets a lot more plus. He also got a fairly good um, Oki or in general neutral tool with his furball, and um, yeah, really not enough matchup experience to confidently rate him. I do know that he overall seems pretty solid, but one thing really not working in his favor is his height, because his height really usually makes it that um, crouch confirms uh, can be can be made even when he's standing, and that makes it difficult to um, for him because he essentially eats more damage from most of the cast, except for Bang, who now has a difficult time. Confirming whether he's crouching or standing because those uh, two stances look so similar on Jubei but um, Yeah, all in all I believe a solid mid-tier character minus uh, Minus he has this hurt box that puts him down kind of a Mewtwo tail situation But in blaze blue so ah uh, Mew 12 you was um Better than either yoi I'm not sure about Carl, and I believe I probably should move Carl upwards just to not get flamed too much, especially if I don't know the matchup that well, then I might as well believe what I hear. But, um, New 12. Definitely the best zoner in the game. And um, the thing about New 12 is what is pretty cheap is that for once she got like. Ragnar range, Ragnar range on her buttons and the buttons are fairly fast and fairly safe. She got a DP as well, which is huge. And using her Stein scanner, she can usually put them out somewhere where the opponent can't touch her. Then put them out and then, the, then they will shoot once. If they are long enough on the field, they will even shoot a second time. And the second shoot is shot is very difficult to avoid because it's just this is very strong laser type attack and uh, she can also make them explode and when they explode they don't explode where they are which would be easily de uh, which would be way easier to deal but instead they um, gravitate towards you and then explode and that makes it very difficult to avoid so essentially when she does that you probably just block and then she can get, get on top of you run some very nasty mix up so her Overhead on its own it's not that good because the first hit is a mid and then the second hit is fairly reactable. But if she has rapid cancel you never know, you can't react whether she will just let the um, second hit rock and have an overhead or whether she will go with the low and then get that. And the next thing that makes her really broken is that uh, when you attack her and the steins she's uh, set out shoot. The steins don't disappear and their, uh, their shooting doesn't either. So you can get clipped after hitting her and that is really insane, especially in matchups like against Kagura or Hakumen or anything where essentially they need that one big hit to change the situation and then you just deny them with just having your auto zoning tool out there. And auto zoning it's definitely one, not one of the most liked uh, playstyle. So yeah, way to a, a very, very oppressive and very strong character. 
essentially can stay on top of you for the entire time but can also uh, just zone you out all the time and has this extra insurance that no other character has except for as we said earlier Kokono with the super so yeah that's why I believe she is a very top tier con contender and now that I yeah, I'm gonna put Azama higher <laughs> because he's uh, similar in the main where I believe he's a little bit underrated. Next up we have Tega, and Tega is definitely a character that struggles. Um, but I believe he doesn't struggle. How much struggle does he struggle exactly? I think less than Astral, but. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, essentially, the thing about Tega is that in theory, he loses pretty much almost every matchup. Every character who has good uh, good buttons to keep him out, then he struggles a lot keeping the, uh, getting in. But the thing about it is he got this uh, he got the auto win condition, which is a spark bolt. So if he can get one spark bolt up which he gets the meter for just by doing nothing, which is always great. But if he gets that one spark bolt, then, uh, and he gets a hit, then he gets like 4k damage and the situation afterwards that's super positive for him. And then he just goes for a reset. Uh, and if you didn't get uh, guess the correct reset, then uh, you eat another combo, and put, which might potentially lead into death. But if you don't, if it doesn't lead into death, then uh, he's still on top of you, and super scary. And that's the entire thing about it. Yeah, he uses neutral against everyone, but he doesn't really need that much to win. Just getting one spark ball, just getting one hit in general with magnet, with anything that induces magnetism, uh, makes the match, uh, match so much more favorable for him. And as such, yeah. Again, he struggles because he struggles to get in and he can get punished for a lot of stuff, but he can reset you all day once he, go once he got in. And all in all, my least favorite grappler to fight against, so that uh, also says a lot because normally I don't mind that much fighting grapplers, but against Tega, oof, that's annoying. He essentially gets his win condition way easier because he can zone you with spark bolt and armor through stuff so he essentially got the the zangief game plan but he got his own zoning tool which is limited limited resource but he got that and alone having that spark bolt ready makes your opponent quiver in fear and you probably can get in without using it and then uh yeah once you got in then you can uh, snowball pretty hard and if they then get out you can still use your spark bolt so that's what makes him a lot better than what you'd think is uh, he is on paper so on that end I believe I will put him on the top of the low tier on the S tier um, next up we got lambda and lambda is better no <laughs> as we said earlier um, honestly, I can see her being triple S here, and it's fun when they stay in, on top of each other, so let's do that. Um, so the thing about Lambda, she still got very good zoning, but she can also get in and run pretty good offense, which is fairly difficult to react, having several, I believe she has a low, um, that she then of course I believe has to rapid cancel if she doesn't want to get punished but still having uh, almost full screen uh, getting close low option is pretty good I say that as a Kagura player who is 2db Sirish and um, also got overhead reaction uh, I believe she got two different overheads one coming from the stance attacks where she also got the low and the other one just being her I believe 4b and could be 6b2 and um, yeah she can mix you up she can zone you up. Uh, she can zone you very well she can also mix you up so she's essentially a lot like Jin 
just a little bit less solid buttons and but better zoning zoning capabilities to that matter and that now that i think about it i kind of need to um uh, separate the sisters there because i believe she's better than susano when i think about it yeah next up Laichi. don't know too much about her definitely a yubas style character uh, because she got super good pokes all in all and when she sets her stuff out she can make lots of her things safe and yeah again sadly i don't have much matchup, matchup experience against her almost none to be fair just because europe doesn't have many lychee players and i haven't really run into many of them and so i kind of have to um, believe the propaganda that i hear and those times i was matched against the lychees and yeah it was pretty difficult for me so uh tsubaki pretty much a solid character but um suffers similarly to ragnar so her pokes are a little bit worse but what makes her somewhat strong is that she got um, a little bit better uh, mix up and um and she can charge uh she can charge cancel and she can charge in general her meter and with her meter uh, not the usual meter but with her drive meter she got a specific one uh, then she get she, then she can get enhanced special which are all quite good and pretty much not really um punishable for the most part and even the um her dp then she, she can set up a ball afterwards that it goes downward and it's technically and TTP is technically punishable then still but it's very difficult and so because her uh, buttons are not as great as Ragnar's I believe it's fair to say that she's a bit worse but uh, yeah my main Ragnar is still outperforming her overall just because he's a little bit more solid but she's still solid enough of course Izanami Honest A tier? No. Um, <laughs> she is what the bullshit blazing category is for. So Izanami being infamous for being one of the most broken fighting game characters of all time. Just because uh, she got ribcage which blocks attacks for you. So gives her, uh, in, uh, gives her super armor as long as she got barrier gauge which isn't that Bad of a trade, it's a pretty good trade in her favor. Then she got bits that can pretty much zone you from anywhere, and she got super good pokes as well. So, combine a solid character with amazing, um, with amazing zoning and this and this sheep move, which is uh, which is which is rip cage, and you get the best character in the game. And I believe she would still be able to could balance around that and still make her only a very strong character. <laughs> but I don't believe it gets anywhere uh, worse than that unless I would take tools away from her. In that case, of course, you could make her an AT or anything. Last but not at least, we've got nine. Another Yuba threat. Now I'm gonna put her into Z tier. And good old Hazama is gonna move up. <laughs> Just as that, just because he is a better type, he's a better character. Um, but let's talk about Nine for a second, of course, because that's a segment about. Um, Nine is a character that was always considered top tier, but uh, she fell off a little bit in the meta development. Um, her biggest strengths are super great pokes, because her pokes are, have great range and are super fast so that's very much in her favor but her movement is kind of stubby she got the uh Ezreal problem that she got teleport dashes that are i believe even a little bit slower than Ezreal so um moving around with her is not that easy and that's the main point that holds her up from being a Ubers type character because her spells that she has then uh range of course from from not being very good to being super broken like she got the fairy that can essentially make her, make her into a poor man's car and then she got couldn't side and overhead which can go full screen 
but it's fairly reactable in comparison to other overheads so that's not as bad as it sounds and then she got other tools such as the uh, electric ball that travels a little bit which isn't that bad she can get a dp if she wants and freeze you and go for resets and stuff and yeah all in all she got super great tools and uh, is one of the most oppressive characters and can be one of the most oppressive character if she can stay on top of you but all in all not quite Uber's level and last we got Noel and Noel is always in the conversation of being a very bad character um, but honestly I don't have matchup experience so it's either I believe the propaganda or I defy the propaganda and that's something I have to uh, think about right now so honestly what what is in her favor are her buttons are not really bad they are super fast and they range fairly well I believe especially her uh, A buttons because she doesn't really only attack with her fist but with her entire gun um, aren't that bad and um, her drive attacks are a bit tricky because they are not really that great for pressure sequencing as far as I if I get that correct, but they are good in calling stuff out. So quite similar to Karagora that she has drive buttons and can call stuff out. Her biggest flaw is that she doesn't have damage and I believe some stuff being inconsistent. But um, yeah, oh, yeah. So that I believe makes her definitely better than Terumi and Ballet. Probably also better than Celica. The question is, is she better than Makoto with all those stuff? Probably not. Is there any other character that she, that I could confidently say that she beats? Not really. So the thing about her is, um, I believe if you want a fast character with great buttons, so Naoto is up there, so you can just go with him. With when you want someone with somewhat stubby normals being fast, being able to uh, call characters uh, to call your opponent out. So yeah, another case of she isn't bad, but she's outclassed. And um, yeah, I believe that makes sense. So let me do some reordering. But all in all, I'm fairly uh, I'm fairly content with how it's looking right now. But personally, why? Yes, technically. Um, Izanami might be deserving of her own tier. I still believe that we have to, to take into account how strong Karl and Arakuna are and compared to the other characters that I put into Ubers. And then within Ubers, I believe some rearranging is in order. <laughs> uh, so, my has great matchups against pretty much all of the cast, but I believe she isn't like super oppressive against any character. Uh, not against any character, but she doesn't have those seven three matchups or anything. It's more like yeah, she wins pretty much anything, but she doesn't win anything that hard. So I believe that makes her worse than S, probably worse than uh, Isayoi too, and worse than Lychee. So Lychee is is a problem that. I don't know enough about her to confidently put her so it's difficult she's always considered one of the strongest characters and yeah no I'm gonna put her behind S just because I don't know enough um Hazama yeah Hazama is better, better than Mai and he's better than Isayoi I'm just saying that the snake is real. The snake is real. Like, if you combine all three good snakes, then you get into a solid mid tier. So that's what the developers thought when balancing the game. They just wanted to make the snake very mid tier. And it turned out to be that way. Um, I'm gonna take a look at the Z tier. Whew. I'm still. Naoto better than 9, kinda makes sense now that I think about it. 9 better than Valkenhain doesn't make sense. Uh, hmm, I honestly might even say that Valkenhain is better than Naoto. I guess I do. 
better than I. Yes, I do too. And better than Isayoi. Yes. Not better than this next, so. So, yeah, um. Z tier. Yeah, Z tier makes sense, but I'm not sure if. If 9 is actually better than Rachel, I don't believe so. And I. Um, is she better than Aurelius, or is Aurelius better? I'm just gonna believe in my boy Sir Panda, so yeah, Aurelius is worse and he just gaps 9. <laughs> um, triple S tier. So our little. So top tier. Top tier minus. Top to high. High tier. Mid tier. Low tier. Bottom tier. And. Honestly, yeah, looks pretty good. Kagura's triple S tier confirmed. It just is not the best triple S tier. Go to uh, go and play Jin if you want the best triple S tier. So, uh, yeah, do we want to talk about cutoff points? Nah, there is no cutoff point. Like, uh, I mean, maybe you can make a point that those characters won't be able to win a major. But considering our best player is a Taker player, everyone in here should be able to. And those, I believe, should also be able to, to be honest, but have a little bit more of a rough time. So yeah, that was my Rambly tier list. A little bit uh, shorter than the matchup chart, not as short as I wanted it to be. But yeah, still, either way, thank you so much for watching. If you think this uh, tier list was bullshit blazing, please leave a like comment and subscribe and yeah we'll see each other in the new year with whatever video comes out then until then bye, -bye.